Coming up on today's episode of The Virtual Couch, everything you ever wanted to know about life in quarantine featuring my family. Today, we discuss life in quarantine, online schooling, what the effects of a lack of schedule look like in the areas of sleep, food, motivation. If any of you are feeling like you're alone, either as the person in quarantine or wondering if the way your family is acting is, quote, normal during this unprecedented time, this episode promises to have your answers. And don't tell anybody now, but my wife, Wendy, makes her podcasting debut. That and plenty more coming up on this episode of The Virtual Couch. Hey, everybody, this is a very quick advertisement, and I know I'm a podcast listener. You can hit the little fast forward button probably on your podcast player, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, but bear with me. I'll try to make this quick. As a therapist myself, I obviously recommend that everybody give therapy a try because when people ask me, do I need therapy? I don't even have to talk to you. The answer is yes, I need therapy. Everyone could use a sounding board. Everybody could use uh, an objective third party. Everybody could kind of dig deep a little bit and find out what are things that they've been holding back on? What are the things that they feel like they should be able to get over or shouldn't be worrying about? Shouldn't, shouldn't, nobody wants to be should on. But we're all hanging on to things that uh, would be helpful to process. And there's even things that we thought we'd achieve by now or things that we really want to achieve so that we won't have these regrets in life. And so if there are people listening right now that might be noticing that their anxiety or their depression might be getting a tiny bit worse, especially with what's going on in the world right now, let's get to it. Let's not leave that untreated. You owe it to yourself, to those around you, your spouse, your kids, you. I mean, you are you owe it to you at the very least to give therapy a try. So if you're nervous about finding the right fit, if you're worried about bumping into somebody in the therapy waiting room, if you have any worries about therapy, might I recommend that you go immediately to betterhelp.com slash virtual couch. Again, that's betterhelp.com forward slash virtual couch, all one word. And just take a look at the world of online therapy. Go check out what over half a million, approaching a million people have already done before you and sign up now by going to betterhelp.com slash virtual couch and get the help that you need, the help that you maybe didn't even know that you need. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's counselor network, which might not be available in many areas. And especially right now with shelter in place, with social distancing, betterhelp.com is designed to do video therapy, telephone therapy. They even have Uh, appointments that you can text. So the service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account at any time and message your therapist and you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus you can schedule these weekly video, phone sessions, whatever it is. So you won't have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. Although every time I do this ad, I do want to say that my waiting room is quite lovely. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. Oftentimes you can start communicating in under 24 hours and the betterhelp.com assessment, the intake alone is brilliant. And they also work with with all kinds of things. Acceptance and commitment therapy, one of my favorite techniques. Emotionally focused therapy. They work with anxiety, with OCD, with depression. So do yourself a favor. Go to betterhelp.com slash virtual couch. You'll receive 10% off your first month's services. And, and I can't lie. Obviously, if you're going to betterhelp.com slash virtual couch, and this is the virtual couch podcast, it's going to help me out a little bit too. So go check it out. You'll receive 10% off your first month services. What are you waiting for? Just go check it out. Betterhelp.com slash virtual couch. Try it today. episode 198 of The Virtual Couch. I'm your host, Tony Overbay. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, certified mindful habit coach, writer, speaker, husband, father of four, ultra marathon runner, and co-author of the best-selling book, He's a Porn Addict, Now What? An Expert and a Former Addict Answer Your Questions, in which I play the role of the expert and creator of The Path Back, an online pornography recovery program that is helping people reclaim their lives from the harmful effects of pornography. If you or anybody that you know is struggling to put pornography behind you once and for all, and trust me, it can be done in a strength-based hold the shame become the person you always knew you could be way, then please head over to pathbackrecovery.com and there you can download a short ebook that describes five common mistakes that people make when trying to get rid of pornography once and for all. Again, that's pathbackrecovery.com. And I want to quickly just ask you to go follow me on Instagram at virtual couch or head to tonyoverbay.com and sign up now to find out about upcoming programs, other exciting happenings, my 
very free parenting course, Tips for Parenting Positively in the Not-So-Positive of Times, is available there. Go to TonyOverbay.com slash courses, and please sign up. Feedback has been phenomenal. Again, it's a free resource, a free tool for parenting, and that's up there at TonyOverbay.com slash courses. And, uh, and I post podcast info, ask questions, all those good things at Tony Overbay Licensed Marriage and Family Therapist on Facebook. But let's get to today's podcast, actually. Uh, a little bit of incentive to go to Instagram. Quick story. Last week I was interviewed by local news channel, news program, Good Day Sacramento. It's a, it's a great program. They used to cover my 24 hour run back in the day when I would run around a track for 24 hours to raise money for local schools. And they're just a lot of fun. And so they, they were interviewing me and, uh, I just have to tell the story. Their reporter, Courtney Dempsey, was going to interview me, and she had been in contact a few days before. Everything was just so well organized, and uh, the way that uh, that news programs work is they will have you come on there a few minutes early. And this is done through Zoom because of the coronavirus quarantining shelter in place. So I had my Zoom link. I've got everything set up. I log on, and Courtney comes on with uh, with a producer. I think his name was Tim. They do a sound check, and then they mute my microphone, and they tell me that I'm going on. I think it was at 7.13 in the morning, and then I can watch the show. And so I'm watching the show, and before me was a segment featuring Elmo, Sesame Street character Elmo's dad, and just let that one sink in. I had zero idea that Elmo had a dad, but here's his dad, and he was talking about mindfulness. Now, I love mindfulness, and I did not know Elmo had a dad, and I have ADD or ADHD in in attentive type. So my brain locks in, and I just start thinking, Elmo has a dad? And then I can't start, I can't stop doing jokes in my head of, well, he had a dad. You don't hear much about his dad. And so, you know, was he, was Elmo this like latchkey kid? Um, should, uh, maybe, should we call uh, Child Protective Services? I mean, I'm just thinking all these things in my head. And then I start thinking, oh, no, no, no. Don't, don't talk about Elmo when you get on. Don't talk about Elmo. Don't talk about Elmo. And I know thought suppression doesn't work. Don't think about the white elephant. You're going to think about the white elephant. So I'm thinking, don't talk about Elmo. I'm starting to give Elmo diagnosis. Does Elmo have dad issues? And then they cut to me and Courtney's lead in was a little bit longer than I had anticipated, but it was all positive. She was going back with the, the anchors talking about parenting positively. And they're making these comments about, man, I need to take notes. And Courtney's saying it's for parent, kids of all ages and parents listen in. And I'm just like, don't talk about Elmo. Don't talk about Elmo. And then they go to me. And so I'll just leave it at that. If you go to Instagram, I posted there what happened next. Um, but I think you can maybe guess. All right. So let's get to today's episode. How is everybody doing in quarantine? And uh, by the way, I have to tell you, if you are a Grammarly fan, I have a Grammarly plugin. For those not familiar with Grammarly, it's a program that checks the grammar of any and everything that you write. Told me that my biggest problem over the last few weeks is the misspelling of the word quarantine. I cannot get it down. But it also shows me how much I'm using the word, and I'm truly trying not to. I'm, I'm trying not to make every show about the quarantine, but it's what we're talking about and, and what we're doing. And I realized during one of the probably millionth games of Mario Kart over the past week with my family that I wanted to take advantage of having everybody under one roof and record what this experience is like. This is unprecedented, especially for my college age kids and, and relatives that I've got near nearby relatives. So actually nearby, literally next door, my wife and her sister, we grew up next to them for 20 years. And so they have six kids, we have four kids. And so it was cousins back and forth to the houses. It was it was wonderful growing up that way. But so let me set the stage. I did ask a few people close to me to sit down together and just talk. And this is totally unscripted. I didn't give anybody a heads up on what the questions would be. Um, I think uh, my wife even feels a little bit duped, like she wasn't planning on answering any questions, that she was just going to be there for moral support. And yet I couldn't be more happy with everything that she shared in particular. I, actually, I've been trying to get my wife on my podcast for over two years. And I appreciate and I hear everybody who has asked me in person or who has e- emailed me and suggested that it would be interesting to hear what the spouse of a therapist goes through. Uh, meaning, is she wise to me when I'm trying to pull my therapy skills at home? To which the answer is a resounding yes. And, and many, many more questions in that vein. And I will even share with Wendy when I get an email that says, Hey, what if you interviewed your wife? And Wendy has been emphatic and just said, uh, no, thank you. But I digress. Uh, she makes her debut appearance. She insists her one and only appearance, but I truly hope that she'll hear from people that she knows maybe how good she truly was on here, and that will lead to more time on the mic. 
But let me quickly tell you who else was in the room. So I had my daughter, Alex, um, Alexa Lovell. She's 22. She's in her junior year at BYU-Idaho. She's studying diagnostic med- medical sonography, and she also currently works as a certified lash technician in Idaho. And I've got this in the show notes, but she can be reached to book appointments if you happen to live in Rexburg or any, any of the surrounding areas through her Instagram account at lovell.lashes. And uh, her husband, Mitch Lovell, uh, it's my son-in-law, is beginning his senior year at BYU-Idaho. He's studying bio- biomedical science and uh, has his sights set on dental school. And Alex and Mitch have been married for one year this week. So happy anniversary. My daughter McKinley, or Mackie Overbay, 20, is uh, she's a sophomore there at BYU-Idaho. Also almost a year into cosmetology school at Paul Mitchell in Rexburg, Idaho. And she's made a couple of appearances on the podcast. So you might be familiar with Mackie already. And uh, making his debut performance as well is my nephew Connor Ferguson, who is very, very funny in this episode. But Connor, 25, is a senior at BYU. He's majoring in neuroscience. And uh, I think Connor will, will probably kill me for saying this, but I was going to, I had a joke in here about, and ladies, he's single. Um, but so, but Connor, I think you're going to love him. But I don't know if you read show notes, but if you did, I wrote uh, that I welcomed my wife for the first time in 198 episodes and uh, my kids, Connor, that sort of thing. But to, I wanted to discuss. Again, life in quarantine, but we hit all the topics, online schooling, what the effects of a lack of schedule look like in the areas of sleep, of food, of motivation. And I I just feel like we cover a lot of things because in my office, I'm hearing a lot of is this normal kind of talk. And uh, so if you're wondering if you're feeling alone, either as the person in quarantine or wondering if the way your family is acting, quote, normal during this unprecedented time, I feel like this episode might just have your answers. So let's leave it at that and let's uh, let's get to the episode with my family. The quarantine kids are back. It's going to make more sense here in a minute. Special, special edition of the Virtual Couch Podcast. We're in a conference room. We're all socially distanced. Is mm-hmm. that correct? But we're also all family. All yeah. been quarantined for the last little while together. Yep. Um, I want to go around the room and just introduce who you are. Uh, let's start right here to my left. I'm Wendy. Wendy, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Please say who you are. I'm the mom of two of the people in this room. And who else? What's your relationship <laughs> to the podcast host, Wendy? We cohabit. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy is my wife, and therefore I win a bet with Monica Tanner of that I got my wife on my podcast first. Thank you, Wendy Overbay, I wife of host Tony Overbay. Yeah. Without knowing this is what we were doing. Thank you for so being I on my podcast today. Yeah, it only took doesn't count. 200 episodes and two and a half years later to do that. I don't think that. it should count because I didn't know. And who is this we uh, to your left? Mackie. Mackie, two time guest of the Virtual Couch podcast. Mackie's yes, home. Sir from school right now. We'll kind of talk about that as well. Um, directly across from me, very, very far away, is who? Connor. Connor, who are you? I am Tony's nephew. Exactly. Are you my favorite nephew, Connor? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I would imagine you would think so, but I think so. Are you, are you my favorite uncle? Am I? Yeah. Oh, of course I am. <laughs> yeah, I am. Exactly. All right. And to your left? I'm Alex. Alex, who are you? You're... Firstborn and favorite child. <laughs> oh, right here. I have it indirectly to my right. Uh, Mitch. Mitch. Mitch is the son-in-law. My my the favorite, favorite son-in-law. <laughs> my, the, the greatest son-in-law I've ever had. There you go. Right. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and I, I am Tony, host of the Virtual Catch Podcast. So the reason I wanted us all together, I want to talk about the unprecedented times. I just we're all home. People are home from college. And the coronavirus, COVID-19, worldwide pandemic, not trying to make fun of it, although I know we'll probably end up laughing quite a bit. But we just, on the way here, stopped and got food, and Wendy and I were in the car, and it was just so surreal, because we walk into uh, Firehouse Subs. I don't, they're not a sponsor, but they're welcome to be. <laughs> uh, and I go in there, and, and people have their masks on, and you can't eat in the dining room. And we come out, and there was a person to our right in the car beside us, and what were they? 
had a mask on. Had a mask on in the car, and it just, it was wild. And I think five, six weeks ago, this would have, would you have believed that this is what the world would look like? Anybody? No. Not at all. <clears throat> not at all. And, then, uh, and then I think there's a lot of people that say this is going to last a long time, or it's not going to last a long time. And I know that this is you guys, this is, you're just doing this. You're in your 20s or late teens, and, and this is just life. I think mom and I feel like we're living in a science fiction well, we were talking in the car, it just feels like a movie. Like, it doesn't even feel real. Yeah. We were in a grocery store a couple of nights ago, and over, what who knows, can recite what they were saying overhead. It was, uh... I mean, I remember no. the social distance. <laughs> yeah, and please. And it was the guy with the cheesy voice. Hands. Don't forget to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Respect your fellow people and stand six feet away and practice social distancing. And I feel like that's a that's a... Um, science fiction movie that we'll be watching. Yeah. Um, before the mic was on and we were having great ideas, what else were you guys saying? What are you noticing? Talk about the day. Connor, you were saying that I was saying day is night, night is day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, so when this all started happening, my sleep schedule was slowly <laughs> started getting out of whack. Eroded. Yeah, I started going to bed at like one, two, then it turned to three, four. <laughs> now we're talking like six or seven. <laughs> and but, you thought you were the only yeah, one. Yeah, I thought I was the only one and then hop on and you see tweets of people saying like, yeah, I don't know if I'm the only one, but my sleep schedule is from 5 a.m. till 2 p.m. And I was I guess I'm not the only one. Yeah. And that, there, was, there was a night, and I talked about this on another podcast, but there was a night that I, so I've been, I still go to work and my practice is very busy and I'm grateful for that. And so I, I get up a little before three and, and try to get a little exercise in, but I'm trying to head to the office a little before four in the morning and I come down and someone had been making sugar cookies. Mackie, you were doing what? Do you remember? A puzzle. <laughs> yeah, Mac was doing a puzzle. Uh, Jake was playing video games. Oh, Wendy was awake beside me. I wake up with my alarm at three forty. Or no, that was like two forty-five. Yeah. And there's Wendy. I think you're playing a crossword puzzle game on your phone. On my phone. You're like, hey, like, hey, good morning. Yeah. So, and I thought that was odd. And then I get out of the shower, go downstairs, and that there's sugar cookies being made, video games play, Mackie doing a puzzle, and I just thought, what? This is weird, you know. Yeah, so sleep, anybody, Mitch and Alex, is your sleep schedule anything different there? Kind of same with Connor, like it, it wasn't, and then definitely the last week or so, uh-huh. I'm playing Animal Crossing, <laughs> <laughs> Mitch is on Fortnite, yeah. up till three, and then sleep in. Yeah, and, and, and Mackie? What? Day and night, I think <laughs> yeah. so. Yeah, and, and we uh, have a two every day. We'll talk about Sydney's explanation. You, so. well, yeah. What, is, what did Sydney tell you? Well, our, daughter, our other daughter Sydney who's not here because yeah. she's probably asleep because it's only two for <laughs> <laughs> in the afternoon. Well, she just talked about how all of her friends are doing the same thing, and that she kind of feels like the reason behind it is that they're so bored. There's nothing to do during the day, and so they would rather sleep all day long. And then at night, it doesn't feel as weird to be awake or to be just like in your bed on your phone. Yeah. So it's just slowly transitioning to let's just sleep through the day hours because there's <laughs> nothing to do. Yeah. And then at night, we'll just all get on and, you know, be on our phones. And yeah, which is pretty much it. Yeah, be on your phones and, and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm curious. And then our son Jake has told me, I think now he's been awake until even eight in the morning or so. And so he told us he's just counting on at some point he does do a full circle. Day <laughs> night thing. So I think that's a little bit of a social or a scientific experiment is what Jake's doing. Well, um, it's, yeah. it's also like one of those things where it's kind of like you're just at home always. And so you <laughs> eat when you're hungry, sleep when you're tired. <laughs> oh. True. And so midnight rolls around. I haven't done anything all day, so I'm not tired. And you're probably and hungry. I'm hungry. So I'll, I'll eat at midnight, whatever. And then just be awake and, you know, playing video games or doing whatever, but not really getting tired because I'm just sitting around not doing anything. Because there's no structure to yeah. right. those normal times. And so I think place. that's another reason that I am going to bed at 5, 6 in the morning just because I'm not doing anything, so I'm not tired. And it's just like, well, I'll just go to sleep when I'm tired. And mm-hmm. it doesn't happen until 5 <laughs> or 6 in the morning. I didn't think about I like what you're saying, though, of it really is a I'll sleep when I'm tired and I'll eat when I'm yeah. hungry. We're doing it like like the cavemen. Okay, exactly, right? I have a couple thoughts. One is I want to transition to how has that affected school? So all of you immediately, you're, you're all in college. Uh, Mackie, you're also doing college as well as cosmetology school, and everything went online. So I want to know your experiences with that, and then I will weigh in on my thoughts that I am seeing in my practice. But I don't know. Who wants to start? Mitch, online school. The big thing that sticks out to me is the motivation is gone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was already kind of gone before, but it's completely out the window now. 
And we were on our, what, like our last two weeks last before two weeks and then they the semester on. ended. Uh-huh. So it was finals week almost. So yeah, it took a big toll. And, and you guys are taking, I mean, hard classes, right? Yeah. And did you find that it is that, what did you miss by going completely online, especially with, I think, the difficult classes? For me, the big thing was being able to study in like an isolated area, like the library or oh. go to tutoring. Like at our school at BYU, it's readily available for us for free. Uh-huh. And so having to kind of learn everything on your own was the biggest thing. Yeah. That makes sense. That does. I didn't even think about the, <laughs> the library or places that you had gone that that almost that represented study. Right. Yeah, that was school. You know, now it's like, yeah. I mean, for me, because we come here and like, First of all, time difference. So yeah. now my class is an hour earlier in the morning. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I probably should have been getting up and getting ready and acting like normal. Right. But because that motivation's gone, yeah. I'm literally waking up a minute before yes. Zoom, my, my Zoom meeting. And I just turn it on. I'm like half asleep. I'm not taking notes like usual. The teacher doesn't know what he's doing because he's never done online. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's hard for everyone because everyone's trying to adjust. So it's like, it's just so hard to... I like have that focus. Like I love what you're saying because yeah. I, I have a couple of teachers as clients, and what you just said there, because um, I know that wasn't meant to be. They have no idea. Oh no, 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 no. Because I've got a, I've got one teacher that told me she she doesn't have kids at home, and she said I've got to learn four different programs oh, to yeah. upload things and to record things. And she said the reason I said no teenagers like I don't know technology, and I'm supposed to just do this, and yeah, and then she doesn't know what she doesn't know what she's doing. Exactly. Yeah. Not yet. Not in a bad way, yeah. but it's like to have this be like. All of a sudden, you just have to switch just do from it. doing everything, yeah. you know what I mean, to yeah. this brand new thing. So it's like it's hard for everyone. Were you jumping in? Hey, what you no, I just think there's something to be said about, and I don't, I know this happens. I don't know if this is like a proven thing or whatever, but there's that saying that when you dress the part, yep. like oh, if, yeah. you're, <laughs> if you're dressed for a certain thing, right? Yeah then you present yourself the way you're dressed. So if you're in your pajamas, you're laying in bed, mm-hmm. you haven't brushed your teeth, you haven't done your hair, yeah. I'm sure that you're just even the way that you present yourself in class, or even like you said, you're not taking notes, you're not yeah. where I think all of that affects your performance, right? And yeah. your ability to maybe even learn and to understand something when you're just kind of, you know, roll out of bed, laying around in your sweatpants or whatever, yeah. you know, and yeah, Connor, you were nodding your head with the, yeah. with the structure. Well, or? It, yeah. It's just like a whole different mindset because I feel like when I'm watching an online lecture or a video lecture that it's more like I'm watching a YouTube video on like how to do something, <laughs> That's good. which is way like, I don't pay attention really, you know? Yeah. And it's just a lot different than going into a classroom, sitting down and being where like I have to focus on the lecture because mm-hmm. what else am I going to do in a classroom? Yeah, and it's just a lot different watching basically a how-to video on the material and trying to learn that, and then going back to like the motivation. It like Mitch said, it's all gone. Like <laughs> I'm still in class right now. I have finals this week, and this is the first time I'm thinking of them because you brought them up. <laughs> But you will rally. You will do fine. Yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll make it I work. hope we're not the only ones who will. <laughs> no, you're not. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I've been hearing this every day, and, and that's why I really want to do this podcast episode just to normalize. I think people yeah. are feeling like, what's wrong with me? I'm the only one thinking this. And I'm thinking, no, you're not. And I yeah. think that's important. Which are, yeah. Oh, I was just say, Connor, you were at our house the other night, and you were like, on your laptop doing something and you're like mm-hmm. oh I totally forgot about this or I just <laughs> yeah. found out about this assignment or I totally well, forgot then, about like, this assignment so many random things that normally don't play a factor or play a factor like the time change like Alex said because everything that's usually due at midnight is now due at 11, at 11 since we're here. an hour ahead here and so I will forget about something and I'm a pretty good procrastinator <laughs> so when I'm Very getting good. ready to, to do my things that are due at midnight I gotta remember an hour earlier oh this is due and if we're know. about to play Mario Kart, then you know, Mario, Mario, Mario Kart takes priority. Uh, of, of course, course it, it does. does. That's where we're at right yeah. now. Yeah. And Mac. Mackie's all hands-on school. I know. Talk so. about that, Mac. Well, yeah, I think for me it was really weird because, like, it's awesome that they were able to make cosmetology school online. Yeah. But, like, there's a major part to the whole thing being hands-on. And, like, that's... Because what's your typical day like? Right. I'm, I'm taking clients from nine to five. Like I mean, you've been, I, yeah, hours and hours yeah. of you've been, you, I mean, cut style, dye, yeah. you've been doing everything. And so to just immediately not have that, yeah. it was so weird that I almost felt like, for me, like cosmetology, all that stuff is like 
has become a passion for yeah. me. And I almost felt like doing the online stuff was making me lose that because I was so just like felt like I was getting gypped almost, like yeah. not getting that hands on. And so it was making it really hard. And so like I ended up I took a leave of absence yeah. for the time being. Like put until it on pause. Yeah, just literally put everything on pause. Um just for like a couple months hoping that things will normalize a little bit. You don't want yeah, to create a know. negative association with right. this thing. Right, I want it to keep being passion. this thing that I love, so I'm yeah. like trying to no, I'm glad, I'm just glad keep practicing things, that. but not, I don't know, it's just, it's so weird. And it's, yeah, again, like, I just never would have guessed in my, you know, year of schooling that I have or whatever, I never would have guessed that this would be oh, absolutely something that's happening, so it's just weird. And then meanwhile, uh, noticing that uh, both Mitch and Connor have um, very nice haircuts with a uh, little dye, uh, what? Dye? Bleached. Bleached. <laughs> Bleached. <laughs> Part. Yeah, I'm practicing. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, Mackie had to bring home her creepy doll. Uh, her name's Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> so there were a couple times that I have been coming down at 3.30 in the morning. And Cassie. There's she Cassie. She gives me a freaking heart attack. No, Cassie. Ever She's in my room now. You guys I know. No, I appreciate it. it. Cassie was in the kitchen for quite a while. <laughs> terrifying. Yeah, I did get to the point where I'd be like, hey, what's up? But I didn't know she had a name. I was talking to you her. You talked to her? I mean, not like we had a conversation. I mean, I wasn't like, I just didn't want to be rude. You should never respond to me? Uh, that's a whole other podcast <laughs> where I'll be featuring psychic guests. <laughs> Um, okay, so has any this is this is exactly what I wanted by the way out of this podcast. So I'm so grateful that you guys are, are participating. Are you tired of video games and or Netflix yet? Anyone? Yes. Yes. Mitch, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't I think, think I if am. anything when we go back to school, I'm gonna want to keep playing and stay, <laughs> and, like stay with my current habits. So, so that could be hard. I think yeah, it'll probably make it more difficult. But yeah, yeah. I Alex. Like- I was just talking to mom about this the other day, but I don't know if this makes any sense, but I feel almost that I'm so bored already uh-huh. that doing those things makes me more bored. I don't know, if, like, I don't know how no, it makes I sense, but saying. it's like, yeah. mentally, it just makes you it's feel like, like I'm so not doing yeah, anything. Yeah, it's like I'm literally doing nothing, yeah. even though I'm, I'm, I am doing nothing, but I don't know. Yeah. I just find myself, like, on social media less now. I didn't uh, think it would I mean, be We were talking about that last night. That yeah. was kind of odd, right? Yeah. Uh, but I also, I don't know, I feel like this is the time where this is a great opportunity to be doing the things that you've always wanted to do. No, I'm glad <laughs> you're I can't that. find that motivation. <laughs> well, and I find that that's what, and I, I'm glad you said that because I want to normalize that. I have people in my office almost daily saying, I should be playing the guitar, I should be learning Chinese, oh, yeah. I should be learning to cook, I should be, should, you know, all yeah. these things. Yeah. Yeah. But you and I were even talking about this the other day, is I kind of wish. I feel like that too. Yeah. I feel like, oh, I'm wasting this opportunity. Like this is, we've all been given the gift of time right. yeah. and it's what we always want. Yeah. And now we're like not doing anything with it. But now I can't remember what I was going to say. You and I were talking about it the other day. Okay. Netflix, video games, and yeah. Connor, well, I left my PlayStation. <laughs> is that why you've been at our house the entire That's why I've been at your house a lot because you guys still have all your video games. I haven't even bought a new one. Exactly. Yeah. No, but I haven't played a whole lot of video games just because I love my PlayStation in Utah, but it's one of those things that I wish I would have brought home. (laughs) But I was joking with Cooper, my brother, the other, uh, earlier today, because I was like, yeah, you got to talk about, uh, I told him that he should come because he needed to talk about how he is re, uh, like put new life into his old video game obsession because he's just on Call of Duty nonstop now. Yes, okay, I've heard about bringing back the so, old yeah, the it's, old it's a nostalgia factor too for there the people go. who well, retro, retro gaming is, is big. Like yeah. I've got a client of mine that's he's busted out every console he can find now. <laughs> yeah. Mackie? That's like I dug up my old DS. Yes you did. Since <laughs> I was twelve. Yeah, like, the, I mean we had to like yeah, were there uh, rust on the batteries or any of that kind of stuff or your Nintendo dogs are all dead. Nintendo dogs are all dead. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny that. that Mackie and Connor. I was like, I don't know what I was doing the other day, but they're like, so you want to get the quarantine kids back together? And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> oh, and then they pull out rock, rock band, band yeah. and a band named Quarantine <laughs> Kids. Yeah, they, we we had a debate on quarantine kids versus the COVID kids. And oh. the quarantine kids sounded a little better. Yeah, yeah, rock band was that was I feel like that was a miracle. That was oh, when we, we had dug. rust on the batteries and yeah. The, yeah. we had to tape the drum. We dug yeah. that. Like, those the should garage. not have worked. No, <laughs> like, yeah. It was a miracle. It was a, it was a quarantine so, miracle. It really was. It was the greatest blessing. Of this whole thing is that it worked and we <laughs> got the band it. back together. I never knew I'd be able to say that. Yeah, I, I remember what I was going to say. Okay, what was it? Because I think it's interesting that. 
I feel like everyone just feels like they have to be busy. Yeah. So if we're not busy with our normal normal stuff, then everyone, well, what can I do? I could learn guitar. I could learn how to cook. I could. And part of me is like, why can't we just be? Oh, you're right. We like, why about. can't we just go? Wow, this is great to not be busy, to not yeah. have stuff on the calendar. But I feel like we're so. Our brains are so locked into if we're not doing anything, then something's wrong. Something's or wrong. we're not being productive or we're not, you know, engaged in something. And and I think it's kind of nice to just be. Yeah. Like, let's just be still and just see what happens. Yeah, and and there is. Zen. I like yeah. That. I know. There is like a little nostalgia kind of effect with that, too, because it takes me back to like before driver's license when I had to rely on someone else to drive me places Mm -hmm. where I was just sitting around at my house a lot which was like elementary school middle school like Mm -hmm. with no responsibilities just kind of sitting around and letting things happen and just kind of enjoying not having any responsibilities and I kind of feel like that's what it's returned to a little bit yeah Yeah. but there is still the added stress of well I have to provide for myself when this is all over (laughs) yeah yeah, it's that unknown too I think it's it's kind of the because we don't have there's I always say there's no precedent for this we can't pull from the last time we had a pandemic right Uh, we aren't entirely sure and this is where I will throw a therapy principle of our brain wants to look at uh, ruminate about the past to yeah but this is what happened before and it wants to say and what if this happens in the future and both of those or yeah maybe you know this all we can do is worry about what we're doing right now um, I had another thought. Oh, I can probably edit out that pause right there. Uh, one thing that I didn't talk about earlier that I wanted to make sure that I addressed was when we were talking about online school and how it's hard. And I think that it was somebody mentioned something about uh, rolling out of bed or we were talking about that. That there is some pretty cool data. They do this a lot with sleep studies or sleep hygiene that talks about not really trying to not watch TV in bed or eat in bed or those sort of things. Because your brain, you know, you want your brain to not go, hey, we're going to bed. Are we eating? Are we watching TV? Are we sleeping? And I feel like uh, I'm seeing clients that say if they're trying to do school in their room, their room is the right place that they don't do school. Or if they're doing online school on their computer and they're used to that computer also is where they play video games and watch YouTube videos, then it's really easy to think, man, one tab over, I could be doing anything I want. I mean, have you had that experience a little bit? Definitely. I feel like... Like you're saying, the brain is totally about like association. Yeah. And so one experience, there was a kid in one of my online classes that was just being real funny on his webcam. Uh-huh. He's, like, he's like doing the cereal challenge where he's laying I down. I talk about him. We pouring watched pouring his cereal into his mouth and then milk into his mouth and like cracking raw eggs into his mouth and just doing everything but paying attention to the class. And since I was at home on my laptop, it felt like I was more watching a YouTube video. And that's where that came from. That trying, makes so much yeah, sense. Yeah, just trying to be, like, watching something funny over <laughs> sitting in a class, which is weird. Which I think that lends a couple of seconds of, you You can talk about, we really enjoyed when people post things about the people that are going to the bathroom and they left their webcam on. Oh, or, yeah. yeah. There's all sorts of <laughs> fun, fun experiences. There's some comedy the gold out there, what's happening on Zoom cams, I think. Yeah. Have any of you guys tried to be funny on a Zoom cam? No, I leave my mic off and my camera off as much as I can. <laughs> you, oh, no, mute that mute other people. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My um, teacher yeah. makes us turn on the camera, which that is good. It, yeah. Gonna, yeah. Then you have to pay attention, I feel like. Right. But it's hard. Uh, I, I was also thinking about when you were saying, Wendy, um, about being calm and just trying to enjoy the moment. I feel, I just want to say this, I have had people come into my office and they almost feel bad if they are finding some good things in this whole pandemic. And I, and I think it's, it's nice to be able to pull positives from here. Especially I've had some moms say they don't have to take kids everywhere. They don't have to worry about what's on the schedule and they feel a bit relief with that. Okay, I have so much about that. Do like, I feel, I feel like I can't say it right. because I feel bad saying like, I think this is the greatest thing ever. Right. Cause you, <laughs> because cause, cause I know I there's know, things people are dying. Oh, and, and yeah. I know, I know there are people who like are struggling financially, yes. who don't know where they're going to, how yeah. they're going to buy groceries or if they're running out of things and if their children have needs. And I recognize that those things are happening, but so I feel guilty saying like, oh my gosh, this is like the greatest yeah. thing ever. But where I'm at in life and in this situation, all of our kids are home. 
and the same, there's nothing on the calendar. I'm like, this feels kind of like heaven, I think. <laughs> like, we're just, like, this is so great, and I'm enjoying it so much. And I love that, like, we're not waking up to alarms, and I'm not helping, not that I help our kids with homework, heaven forbid that, and, like, you know, <laughs> they would not want me to help them with their homework. But, like, nobody has school projects, really, that, you know, there's, mm-hmm. there's not these things, and there's so much that I miss doing, like, the sports and, and right, we, things yeah. that our kids are missing out on. But I, like, I just love the... Everybody being home. Yeah, everyone home, nothing on the calendar. Just, yeah. But I feel so bad saying that because I feel like I should be like, this is the worst thing ever. And, yeah. oh, my gosh, it's a pandemic and people are dying. And, and, I, and I understand that, so I want to be sensitive to that. But for what it's creating for... Or what it's created for us, I think there is a lot of positive. Yeah. Today on our run, I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> how we, we you were counting? Yeah, yeah, we ran one way and the other, and then we meet in the middle, and then we run together, and and you, we, I catch up with you, and then you, you have been counting. Yeah, I've yourself. been counting people, and not even necessarily group. Like there were a lot of groups of people, but I just counted them as one. But I quit counting at thirty individuals or groups of people that I saw in the three miles that I ran from our house to meet you. Yeah. 30 different people out walking. And, and you would never see that. Oh, no. maybe, maybe, maybe seriously two or three, yeah. right. maybe in the, like cor- in the course yeah. of a run. And today, like 30. literally quit counting at 30. And then we saw plenty on the way home. Yeah. And, and I feel, I just hope that that's the stuff I hope people continue to do. Yeah. I know. I wonder how much of that's actually going to stick around after all that. So, all right. On that note, any thoughts on what do you think will, will be changed in the world after this? What's, what's going to stick around? I think shaking hands is going to be a thing of the past. I think about this all the time. I now. think that would be the greatest thing ever. I think <laughs> Don't you? Come on. I think shaking hands is weird. I hate it. I hate it. I think it's I weird. enjoy it, but I don't, I I don't it's mind it. Word. I don't. I don't, I don't mind it at all. Yeah. But I do. I do think it's not going to be a thing anymore. I don't think yeah. it's necessary. Back in my pre-therapy days, so we're talking twenty-five years ago, when I used to go to Japan three or four times a year, they don't, you know, they don't shake hands at all, and you have the bow, and I, I do. We're I don't think we're. Gonna, we can start it right here. I don't want it that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I do think it's interesting because that's where when when you do, I'm being so uh, what uh, I'm not. I'm stereotyping, but then when you would go to shake a hand, it was rare that you would find a person that was had a very firm handshake because it was almost like, oh, I will put my hand out and you will do your thing with it. <laughs> yeah, so I thought that was interesting. There's nothing worse than a limp handshake. Yeah. Okay, what do you guys think though about the elbow bump? Mm-hmm. Be honest. It makes me I, I don't like it. Just okay. yeah, just. You just get weirdly <laughs> close just to be like, don't yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not necessary. It just all seems unnecessary. I, I, I agree. agree. Yeah. This, this is good enough. Yeah. A wave I found myself putting those thumbs up even as you walk away from the podcast. Connor waves like a, like the, the queen mother. Exactly. Yeah. That's, 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 that's right. his wave. Exactly. Right. It was a very elegant, majestic mm, wave. Majestic. <laughs> I like it. I it was. Fist bumps. That would be bad. I, yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. I can see it. Fist bump and then sanitizer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. On like on like a little phone carrier, but instead you got a little yeah little uh, bar of soap, bar of soap, <laughs> bar of soap, little Purell <laughs> model. Yeah. Model. All right. So handshakes, I love it. I think that yeah, I think they're probably not coming back. Um, what I else? think I think all like restaurants and food places are going to be more cautious, like more gloves. I think for yeah. sure. I don't know if masks will stick around forever, but I wonder. I think gloves are going to be huge and yeah. just like. Doesn't it make you think though about how many people are touching the things that you're touching? I know yeah. you start to realize it yeah. way more. That's, Even that's, stuff that you do when you're like, oh mm-hmm. wow, I totally would have touched that or done this, and it's weird. I mean, today we're in a conference room, um, and you were, like, uh, spraying the pen, you know? I mean, yeah, I didn't want to touch the pen on I know, the but table. it's like, who would have ever right. thought yeah, that it would be so... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, usually you, like, put it in your mouth. That's right. right. <laughs> but then I, like, grab the can of Lysol to spray the pen, and I'm like, well, I just touched the can of Lysol. So how many people have touched that can of Lysol before me? Like, I know, and I handed you guys a bag of some Easter candy, and I felt bad because I was rooting around on that thing with my hands. Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Sorry, about yeah. it, though. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Any other things that you think? Well, I was listening to a podcast today, and they were talking about how this might accelerate um, using cash and coins a lot less. Oh, I and I really that. agree. Yeah. Although I will, t- uh, true confession. Um, so, still going to the office extremely early. There's one McDonald's that's open 24 hours in the Rockland and or Roseville, 
and I may have gone there for an Egg McMuffin at about 3.30 in the morning, and I thought, okay, I'm going to do Apple Pay, because I know that they did that. So I hold my phone out, to, and it says I'm going to do the Apple Pay, and then the guy grabs my phone, and then takes it <laughs> in, and he does the, and he's like, oh, here, and he hands it back to me, and I have to look at it, and then he grabs it back for me, and then I thought, nice. okay, I don't think that was the plan. <laughs> it's like Apple Pay. It's worse than handing them a $20 bill. Like, oh, yeah, exactly, right? And I think when we were at Chick-fil-A one day, I basically had to hang my entire body out of the car, but I heard that that's yeah, changed now. Your so I did have to undo my seatbelt. So Chick-fil-A is like... Genius. They, they figured are. out. Wow. They they just have always got to figure it out. I know, out, right? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, but that one, that one, I've got. I may have a client or two that has is involved in Chick Fil A. They are constantly, almost on a weekly basis, coming out with new rules that yeah, kind of keep crazy. them safe and move things along. Yeah. And I think that's interesting to see. That I feel so bad for businesses. I mean, we were driving by the movie theater that's near oh, my yeah. office, and I just thought. I can't even imagine that, but I, I think that there are some that have, like restaurants that have tried to stay pretty relevant, and it's like Chick Fil A. Or we went to a our local Mexican restaurant because we thought, oh my gosh, I really hope that they're doing okay. Were you with me, Mac? Mm-hmm. And we walked in, and I was like, ah oh, man, I feel so. Good. How are you guys doing? It's like doing pretty good, you know, <laughs> like people, better than yeah, like yeah, yeah, because in a lot of takeout crazy. and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. And I feel like the uh, delivery. Like um, DoorDash. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I was already a pretty big fan of that. So, But I feel like that's even going to continue to stay strong, I would imagine. What would this have looked like without DoorDash? I don't know. Like, we use it a lot. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and I think it would have been weird if that had not... Because that's a fairly new thing. And if that had not been a yeah. thing, yeah. would this have created it? Or, what, right. you know? Yeah. Between... Oh, go. Oh, you keep going. No, finish go, your thought. Go, go. So you last time I walked into a... When I walked into a restaurant to take to order takeout the last time just between me ordering and getting my food and leaving there were five DoorDash people that showed up oh, yeah. to pick up food and take it yeah which I had, like I never saw DoorDash people around before this yeah um yeah I was just gonna say I think it's cool how quickly like stores have responded though to people's concerns and uh-huh. I'm sure it's because they want to con- people to continue to come or whatever but like I've gone to Lowe's one day to get paint and Lowe's is like the busiest place on earth I think right now because I like projects like what can I do right so I went one day to get paint it was just normal and the very next day I went to get something different that I forgot or something and they had like plexiglass up yeah like between you and the cashier like a sneeze guard yeah exactly and then I noticed like two days later Walmart had it and you know like you just it's just like they're just responding I think like you yeah. were saying every day there's something, you know, different. So when I just even joke about sneeze guard, are salad bars a thing of the past? They should be. Mm-hmm. You <laughs> love a salad bar. Oh, I'm all about the salad bar, but when you just think of the food sitting out there and everybody walking by, and coughing and Well, that's like Mongolian, like we were talking about. I know, I know we're, we're, we really want Mongolian barbecue, and I do not think that they are open right now, and yeah. we'll hope that they come back stronger than ever. Yeah. Right? Um, I had a couple of thoughts. Oh, when you when you talk about Lowe's and this, uh, if anybody else is listening to this, to normalize, I've been obsessed with trying to find weights. Um, oh the world is sold out of weights and weight benches, and we tried to buy a Nintendo Switch online, and uh, oh. oh, so gone. So I wonder what oh else in puzzles? No, yeah, puzzles. You guys went to find puzzles. Out. You ended up getting pretty lame puzzles, right? Oh, so well, yeah, bad. they were horrible, and I've already done all of them. <laughs> I'm so bored. Yeah, puzzling is very, uh, very big, and we've been ordering games. I know. If only we had known. You yeah. Know? Like we could have made yeah. millions. I feel like there's going to be a funny thing where somebody's going to invest heavily in the puzzle market just in anticipation of the next pandemic, which will not happen. Right. Yeah. Not, not, in not in our lifetime. Not in our lifetime. Maybe yours. Exactly right. And isn't that crazy that people refer back to the 1918 oh, pandemic, so flu pandemic? That. They'll be yeah. like, you grew, your kids are going to be like, oh, we learned about this in school. And you'll be like, oh, yeah, we totally like remember that. We were in college, and it was this happened, and that happened. Yeah, and that's part of why I want to do this podcast. We have a daughter who's a senior who's going to graduate. And not going to get not going to get to go anything. anything. They're now pitching stuff about virtual proms no. and things like that. No, no virtual prom. Yeah, virtual prom. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, any other thoughts on things that won't come back or things that you're thinking about while we were recording this? I think airlines oh, and mm. cruises, all that kind of stuff, I think it's going to take forever for them to bounce back. Yeah. Uh, the cruise industry is, is going to be a big one just yeah. because there's so much about 
people are just so much more conscious about like the cesspool of germs that <laughs> yeah. exist on a cruise ship. Yeah. Which Alex and Mitch. Okay, were yeah, I would say Alex and Mitch would we can be on it right now. We would have just gone home uh, yeah. from a week long cruise. From a week, a week long cruise. cruise that was they've been they're, to, they're about to celebrate yeah. their first year of marriage and have been waiting for this basically yeah. honeymoon like cruise. And it was ripped out from under you. Yeah. Yeah. So unfair. It really is. Um, I got an email. About people missing wed, like Do people who are so sad, or people so having sad. babies, and your husband can't be like yeah. all that stuff. Oh it's my crazy. gosh, it's so sad. Well, I feel bad because I, I totally hear you with the we want to say, but but this is it's unprecedented, and you'll be able to say. And but I feel like for each of the people that are going through that, they yeah, they don't see the experience. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, they don't they don't want to not go through it. Yeah, this would be such a different time if you were. You know what I mean? Yeah, if you really were affected deeply or had it or anything. Yeah. I don't anticipate airlines taking super long, though, because I feel like once once everything's back to normal, people are going to want to go see their family. That they yeah. Have yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I do. I agree. And I do wonder about things like business. I wonder if uh, business travel will be down. I wonder if people will continue to do more of the online meetings. Or I know. Yeah. Yeah. For, like, working from home. It's like, I wonder how many businesses are struggling with that but also maybe they're like oh this actually works like so that, should we do this more or i'm what so do you think? curious about that well i've got a guy um the uh, a friend of mine who his business is is expanding people's networks mm-hmm. and he just said that even companies like we were talking about with schools well, all of a sudden everybody says go home and, and work from home and they're having now security issues or you know just there was so much that mm-hmm. they didn't yeah. necessarily um anticipate, anticipate yeah. yeah and i talked to someone yesterday who was talking about their, they work for a very large com- company and they just didn't realize how much lack of accountability that they would be able to have. Okay. That people are, you know, and people can say, oh, my internet was down or my this, or I wasn't aware of this. or yeah. And so they, they're struggling a bit. So I'm really, There's I'm more really, issues. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I talked to somebody in the communications industry a few days ago and they were talking about even how much of a challenge, I guess. And we were talking about this too, when the, the, exposing some people who really just don't have access to things like internet. You think that everybody does. And this person uh, was working with some pretty remote school districts and finding out they got all the kids Chromebooks, but then they find out how few kids even had internet in some of these outlying areas. And so some of those things, I don't know if people working from home, if they would run into that same situation or. Well, we have, when we first started the zoom meetings, we, Uh, my teacher gave out like a survey for everyone and it was like, you know, check the boxes if you have Wi-Fi, if you have, mm. like, a room you can do this in, a laptop, like, a safe family environment. Because it's like, yeah. how many people are stuck at home with, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Just a bad situation. So, yeah, I don't know. No, so, I, so and I, I found that I thought almost all of my sessions would eventually move to Zoom. Mm-hmm. Uh, as an essential worker, my, my, my therapy practice hasn't slowed down at all. And I found that maybe the first week or two, the Zoom meetings were starting to ramp up. And then since that time, more people are coming back into my yeah, office. And I think sense. because, and, and I love, I mean, there, I have betterhelp.com sponsors my podcast. So online therapy is, is growing and I do sessions every day, a couple of sessions like that, but there is, you just miss that interaction. Yeah. So whether it's work or school or, or therapy too. All right. Anybody else? Any other thoughts? Anything you want to add? No, that's exactly what I was wanting to do. I appreciate everybody coming in. My wife has been on a podcast now, mm-hmm. and she spoke a lot. You can edit me out. I will edit nothing. <laughs> I will edit nothing. As a matter of fact, I can't wait to record the intro to this before it gets to the interview. I'm going to go on and on about how amazing you were on this podcast. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Wendy, Mackie, Connor, Alex, Mitch, thank you so much for uh, being on this episode. Thanks, well, nice. Until the next pandemic. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time on the virtual couch. Emotions flying past Our heads and out the other end The pressures of the daily grind It's wonderful Elastic waste and rubber ghost I'm floating past the midnight hour They push aside the things that matter most It's wonderful
systems don't explode Allow the understanding through To heal the legs and hearts you broke The pain is 